place inside my heart. Oh, what I live to see. Peace inside the earth. Oh, what I live to see. Peace inside me. Thank you, Dan Dale Cottrell. <laughs> and welcome, everyone. CCL members, Awakening Together members, and uh, graduate program members of Helen Hamilton's program. We're so pleased to welcome you here this morning. We've all been in a lovely retreat, retreat with Helen, so we're all kind of blissed out <laughs> right now. And it just, I feel it, and I, I just sense it in it's in the room here today and in all of us. And um, we're just grateful for your presence. So I invite you all to just sit back and um, stay centered in your heart in a place of stillness. And at the same time, be here with each other. Thank you. If you were, will repeat after me, I open my heart to the universe accepting love and peace. I open my heart to the universe accepting love and peace. I open my heart to the universe accepting love and joy. I open my heart to the universe accepting love and joy. I open my heart to the universe accepting love and complete health. I open my heart to the universe accepting love and complete health. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and abundance. <laughs> to the universe, accepting love and abundance. <laughs> and so it is. And so it is. All right. So we'll take a moment to just pray and start our service. So I invite you to s sit back in your chair and just relax. Feel yourself grounded. Feel your feet grounded to the floor connected to Mother Earth, and keep your awareness in your heart. And we'll just affirm to ourselves that we know that all is in the perfection of the one presence. And that one presence is all that is. And we are, we are that one presence, right here and right now. And we know that there is only that the right here and the right now. And as we spend time here with each other, we know our own perfection. And in knowing that perfection, we know that peace lives within us. And in that knowing, we see it in each other as well. And that is the true essence of community. I know I am the one source. I see it in you as well. No separation, only one. In this recognition, in this deep gratitude and appreciation, please join with me in saying thank you, and so it is. Thank you, and so it is. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So good to be here once again. And I'm glad that everyone had a great retreat. And I want you to, and I invite you to sing and join in with me. It's very important that I have your participation, whether you're here or whether you're at home. Please join in and sing. Okay, it makes me feel good inside. Thank you. Clap your hands. This is the love. I invite you to love. This is the love song. So 
So simply love, love, love. Thank you for standing up. All right, love, love. You can move it home, love, <laughs> love. And then so if we sing, Come on, a little stronger. Love, uh huh, that's better. Love, uh huh, love. And then we go up to love, love, then love, 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 love. So that last one is love, love, love. Okay, so watch that one's a little turn. Two, ready, love, love, love.
Thank you. That was beautiful, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dal. So we have our inspirational reading, and I'd like to introduce you to Reverend Jerry Scott. <laughs> Jerry's a dear friend of mine. We went through practitioner training together here at CCL with Reverend Carroll. We went through ministry school together here at CCL with Reverend Carroll. And um, she's remained my prayer partner ever since. Um, good morning. Good morning. I'm going to read something called Welcome Home. It's from the Hamilton Gita by Helen Hamilton. Welcome home to the silence. Rest your head here, weary traveler. How far have you come without taking one single step? How long have you walked just to arrive right back home? For you see, you never left home, and all your wanderings were simply dreamlike. Stay here with me and rest deeply. Drink deeply from this silent place until you can wander no more. Let each thought and each doubt rest here too. This silence is large enough for everything to lay down and rest. Bathe in this silence until it has washed you clean of all imagination. Breathe in this peace until it pervades you. Dive deeply into the stillness until you forget how to leave. Rest here with me and take off your shoes you don't need them anymore. Stay here and forget everything. Forget me, forget you. Silence is waiting to make you whole again. There is nothing else that you need to go. Nowhere else that you need to go. Thank you. How was that? Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> So um, at this point in the service, uh, we do an affirmation, and what we do is really affirm to ourselves the truth of our being, okay? So we do it within ourselves, and we say it to each other as well. So it's usually a call and response, so that's what we'll do here, and I'll say it, and then Reverend Paul will lead all of you in the response, and as you can see on the, um, it's printed here on your bulletin, um, it's an adaptation from another of Helen's writings from the same publication, the Hamilton Gita, and it's called The Greatest Freedom of All. So I turned her text into an affirmation for all of us. <laughs> I recognize that my greatest freedom is being at peace. I recognize my greatest freedom is being at peace. I know that my peace comes from acceptance of what is. I know my peace comes from acceptance of what is. I accept what is in this moment. I accept what is in this moment. I am exactly as I am in each moment. I am exactly as I am in each moment. I am at peace with what is. I am at peace with what is. I am a living example of this greatest freedom. I am a living example of this greatest freedom. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. And put this up on your refrigerator.
sets us free. clap for Dell. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Dell. What a beautiful introduction to Helen Hamilton. Um, one of the things I love about Helen is she lives in that awareness that there is only love. And she embodies it in everything I've ever seen her express, do, or say. So um, we are really um, blessed by her presence here today. And just to tell you a little bit about her, she's here visiting from the UK, and she's doing a retreat here at CCL, as most of you know, and um, she's just completed another retreat in Virginia, and um, she does live here part-time as well, and she loves being here, so we're very grateful for that. And um, the other thing I love about her is um, she's an exalted being who lives an ordinary life like you or I. She's a mother of four, um, and everything that she teaches, she teaches from her own direct experience um, because she had a lot of life experiences, as you can imagine, being a mother and raising four children and um, emotional challenges and the same kinds of challenges you and I have. Um, and through that, she really had um, an intention that she's carried throughout her life to um, to be awakened and 
Uh, maybe she can tell you a little bit about what that means to her because it's, um, it's something that, that she was able to achieve and because she could achieve it, she says we can all do that and she's here to demonstrate that to us um, because we can all live in a place where there's less suffering and actually no suffering in our life. So with that, I introduce you to Helen Hamilton. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to start by saying a huge thank you uh, to everyone here at CCL, uh, everyone as part of the, the Zoom um, organization as well. Have you ever walked into a place you've never been before and felt completely at home? It felt like that on a Friday, right, as we uh, walked into the retreat center. And it's just been a continu continuation of that. And this morning as we walked in here, you know, every day my life challenges me to open my heart ever wider. And today was a huge <laughs> challenge because it was all this love just coming um, at me in a most beautiful way. And I feel so blessed and grateful to be here. And um, yeah, thank you. And um, thank you for the original invitation. Um, I was going to stand while I give this talk, and then um, I decided to ask for a chair because every now and again, um, some nerves come up, like right now. Um, the very first time I spoke in front of people, it was in front of a thousand people, and it was at a training seminar. And I had this, you know, powerful business suit, you know, like the power suit. And when I put it on, I felt like Superwoman, you know. And I was standing with this microphone in my hand and I was shaking so much. My knees were just like wobbling, you know? And it actually looked like I was dancing. I was, people started dancing. They thought I was like <laughs> encouraging them to dance. So I just went with it. <laughs> but I thought I would sit today and just... Uh, Luckily, I'm, I'm never terrified anymore, just slightly nervous. And for me, that's always a, a reminder of the great um, privilege and honor to be here and to hopefully be able to offer some words that uh, inspire and um, invite. So the whole theme of this weekend has been abiding in peace. And the name of this talk is... Um, Peace is here and now. I have a terrible memory. <laughs> What's my name again? <laughs> and um, I was, rev uh, I heard something this morning when I came, I think it was Jane that said it that, um, who had heard it from someone else that, and I'm probably gonna uh, paraphrase it badly, but a commitment is when uh, making a commitment is just one less choice you have to make. And I thought that was so beautiful because it kind of describes exactly what abiding in peace what was for me. It was a, a decision, a commitment, a turning towards an opening and inviting a Surrender. I never knew what that word meant, surrender. And I tried, when I thought I was a person, <laughs> I tried so hard to surrender. I could surrender anything. I was an Olympic gold medalist at surrendering. But it would always come right back, <laughs> like on an elastic thing. And there was no end of things to surrender like that, right? Have you noticed? You never get to the end of it. So, right about my darkest time, I found myself, um, which was an unusual experience, but on my knees in my bedroom. Um, 
and at the time I had um, a whole lot of I, either photographs or drawings of all the great teachers that have inspired me. So there's Christ and uh, Buddha and uh, Shiva and um, modern day teachers like uh, Muji and Ajishanti and everything in between and Ramana and <coughs> And I found myself just gazing at the picture of Christ that I had. It was, a, it was a painting, and in the painting you had this very enlarged red heart, like really noticeable. And I, I, f I really understood for that moment, maybe just w the first time what surrender actually was, and it was just, please help me, help me. Like I can't do this anymore. Right? If you don't help me, or if I don't learn how to receive the help, which is probably way more true. <laughs> Just imagine God going, oh, there she goes again. <laughs> you know? I just couldn't take it anymore. I was in the middle of a depression, um, and I had three children at the time, and it was probably the worst moment of my life, if I'm honest. And I just felt drawn to look at this picture. It wasn't like a massive spiritual moment, but the, the heart of Christ just seemed to leap out of the picture. And something happened in that moment that I will never forget. I don't know what happened, and I don't really need to know, but I do know some shift happened, began to happen at least, from trying to get somewhere, trying to get to some future moment where I would find peace and stability and all of that to just not knowing any way forward at all. I had reached that point many times before, right? The end of the road, no more strategies, no more plans. The recognition that even if I did have plans, it just would not work. And a total willingness, even just for a moment, to just let go of any ideas of what I thought I should be doing or how to, <coughs> to solve the problems I thought I had. Something began to open in my heart. It just, And I'd heard about these great teachers had this kind of experience. I thought, what a load of rubbish, you know. I'm going to keep reading my scriptures. Something started to happen, and it wasn't big. It was just tiny, and it was in the background, but it began. It began in that moment. Or well, maybe it began a long time ago, but maybe I noticed it then. And about a week later, I was lucky enough to spend some time with Adyashanti, and he said something that changed my entire existence. He said that peace is here and now. <laughs> of course, I'm sitting there in amongst 300 people, and I'm like, no, it's not. You know, I'm trying to look all spiritual, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm looking at everyone else down the row, going, are they getting this, or am I missing out? And it looked like he looked directly at me, right? I mean, he was looking around the, the room, 300 people, but it was just for a second, looked like he was looking really at me, like right at me. He said, peace is here and now. Maybe I was just ready, maybe I was more open, and maybe because of this previous moment the week before, there was just something like, I'm never gonna find it by moving forward towards some future moment, right? I'm never gonna get there that way. And I'm sure we've all tried. And again, this deepening of understanding of what surrender is, what surrender um, means. I'm such a, a word nerd, I love words. I went and Googled what surrender meant and the etymology of it. And it comes originally from, from a word that means to give back, not to give, but to give back. Something that was never ours to give something back. 
so of course I set about what do I want to give back well, everything <laughs> everything take it and in that we were there for an hour and a half uh, with my husband and with uh, this event with Ajishanti and I just spent the whole time crying and not that you know none of that beautiful spiritual crying where you can just dab your you know it was like just everything my body could do and then we left the talk and walked around London to get something to eat because it was down in London <coughs> and I was still crying we walked into the store to get some drinks I was still crying we walked up to pay I was just sobbing right for about three or four hours <laughs> I didn't care right I was getting some very strange looks from people I just didn't care at that point and something changed in me a recognition that maybe I've never really um, <coughs> uh, dived deeply enough into this moment that maybe peace is, is here right now. And I began to understand the power of an assumption, a belief that if, it, if I really feel it's not here, I will miss it every single time. Because my experience certainly wasn't peaceful. I was feeling all kinds of fear and shame. Felt like I didn't deserve to exist. I was embarrassed even to want to awaken. Thought, who, you know, who am I to even try? But something wouldn't, wouldn't let it go inside. Couldn't let it go. I didn't even know what awakening meant. I just <laughs> heard it was a good idea, you know. <laughs> Any port in a storm, right? <coughs> So something started in this surrender, this momentum of seeking something that wasn't here apparently in some future moment it just began to turn inwards. What if I stop trying to get towards some place or time that doesn't really exist and see what's here right now? And it, it was just like this turning and it's still ongoing today, this diving deeper into this moment with a, a recognition that I can't um, ever get to the end of what's available in and as this moment. There's a wellspring of peace that only multiplies as you access it, right? The better it gets, the better it gets. And maybe, I've tried to look at this a hundred different ways, but maybe what changed for me on those two occasions was a willingness to admit that I might already deserve this. Not actually admitting it, because I wasn't ready. But again, Ajishanti said something. He said, this, this love, this peace, it doesn't care if you feel ready. It loves you anyway. It's not separate, but... So this is beautiful turning inwards, and that's what I'd like to invite you each to uh, feel with me now and hear this. What actually is here now? Have we just dived in to what is here and now? Because it'd be easy to just say, I'm sitting here on this chair talking to you all, and we had a wonderful time. But just diving deeper into, opening up to what might be here <coughs> that is um, not always uh, obvious. And what I found when I started to turn inside, whatever that means for each of us is different, but Surrendering the search for something that I don't think is here and being willing to have been wrong about that. What if it had been here forever? Always. So close that I've missed it every moment. Hidden in plain sight. Everywhere. This peace of God, of the divine essence, consciousness presence, whatever you want to call it, love.
and I discovered that I'd been utterly wrong and there was no qualification needed at all for this. I mean, he didn't even need to be breathing, <laughs> just, you know, just being this. And everything changed then, everything began to change, slowly at first. And there was still a choice, an option to keep seeking, but it became just an old habit rather than a way of being, that I dipped into this old habit um, every now and again. Well, you know what it's like to wake up every day feeling more loved, more safe, more valued, to have more joy, peace, deep and abiding love that loves you so completely that you just cannot survive and come through with any kind of insecurity or doubts about yourself, self-hatred, shame, anything like that. So I'd like to invite you to open your heart to that, whatever that means for you. And if you've done that, then do it again. Do it deeper, do it fuller, do it richer. It really is infinite, and that means for the rest of forever, physical body or no body, there is more for you to experience of this moment. It truly is endless. And that, that love will find its way with you, whether you resist it or not, whether you think you're worthy or not, <laughs> whether you feel ready or not, whether you know what to do with it or not. There was no way I would ever have sat in a chair like this and spoken like this. And despite my best resistance, <laughs> love decided that this is what I ought to do with my life. finally figured out how to, to get with the program, <laughs> work with it. <laughs> and I wish the same for all of you. And you've obviously got a good start on it being here in this beautiful event. Maybe I'm just playing catch up here, <laughs> what everyone else already knows. Because every moment that you open your heart deeper, you feel better, and so does everyone else around you. And this awakening, instead of making me special or have superpowers, you know, that kind of thing like I thought it would, or well they might be on the way, who knows. <laughs> it became deliciously ordinary, ordinary. An ability to just like myself and be here and not be terrified of life anymore. So thank you for, for having me here. Thank you for inviting me and welcoming, welcoming me so, so deeply into your hearts. And I hope that you do the same for yourself. I hope you would treat yourself the same way you would treat me, have tre have treat me, <laughs> treated, treat. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I forgot to tell you she's funny too. <laughs>
please let me feel inner peace from my center at the center of me. Please let me feel inner peace from my center at the center of me. center at the center of me my heart is open I am aware in me is a knowing of love 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 my heart is open From my center at the center of me. I don't know about you all, but I could sit here and meditate for a few minutes. <laughs> but we have this room until noontime, so I think we'll move on. Thank you, Dale, for that beautiful sequel to Helen's very inspirational and deeply heartfelt talk. Thank you. So we're at the operatory part of our service, and this is our opportunity 
to complete the circle of giving and receiving, right? Um, we're all here today because that's what we're doing in our beingness, right? And Katura demonstrated that so beautifully when she just very quietly walked over here and brought Helen some refreshment. Um, for some reason, she sensed that that was needed at that moment, and um, we all have those sensibilities at some point, but she was giving of her heart just in a very simple way, and we all have those moments where we do that, and um, Helen received it very gratefully. So, you know, there's a circularity to our giving and our receiving, and that's what we're doing here. Um, so we invite you to contribute to CCL, and those of you on Zoom as well, <coughs> electronically or um, materially, I guess, um, because, uh, you know, in completing that circle, we can all be here, and Dale can be here uh, bringing her beautiful music, and Helen can um, come across the pond and uh, share her deep spirituality with us, and our media team can all be sitting here making everything happen, and Reverend Catherine and uh, Wayne on Zoom, uh, not quite visible, but very much there, making all of this happen with all of us, and all of the team here today. Um, who are really creating this sacred space. So I want to thank you all for being here because your presence alone, as Helen said so eloquently, your presence is the givingness, really. Right? It comes, it radiates from us when we're in that place of joy. So thank you. Look in your bulletin under blessing of our offering and please say it out loud with me. Thank you, God, for this abundance that is mine to share. I bless this gift and give it to thee in gratitude and joy, knowing that as I give, I do receive. And so it is. <laughs> and so it is. I am so. so grateful for all that I am. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so We express gratitude and appreciation in this moment for all of these gifts and contributions to our sacred purpose here today and every day, living life to the fullest, knowing that life is the presence within us and that as we give and as we radiate joy within ourselves, that is our true giving. And in this giving, we receive it back multifold as life unfolds and expands in so many beautiful and unexpected ways. And in this gratitude and appreciation, please join me in saying thank you. And so, so it, it is. is. Thank you. So when I first came to see CCL, this was my favorite point in the service. And pretty much it still is. It's a blessing if I can find it. Ha. It's a blessing for everyone who's here for the first time. So I'm going to ask everybody here who is here for the first time to please stand and stay standing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you 
just to receive this blessing, okay? And everybody else, you know the, you know the drill. So if you'll repeat after me, welcome to the Center for Conscious Living. We are a heart-centered spiritual community. We open ourselves to you in love. We recognize the perfection of God within you. We celebrate the joyous being that you are. You are a radiant point of light. We are blessed by your presence. Welcome home. Okay, so before we come to the end of our service, we have a few um, announcements and um, thank yous. We always start with thank yous. So first of all, thank you to Helen Hamilton for joining us today <laughs> and this weekend. We are deeply grateful. Um, this weekend has just been amazing. And um, I don't know what else I can say. We're just so grateful and so joyous. Um, so thank you. I also want to thank Helen's husband, John. Um, <laughs> I, I suppose if John weren't here, Helen would somehow be able to find her way, but he makes it so much easier for her. And she said no. <laughs> so I'm going to believe her. <laughs> so we know... We all know how um, essential our partners are and how much they contribute to, um, to our life. So thank you, both of you, for being here today. And Dale, of course. Thank you, Dale. <laughs> what many of you don't know is that Dale and the musicians work very closely with us for a week, really, to coordinate the music with the theme and the talk and all. So um, it's always a pleasure for me, personally, to work with Dale. So thank you. <laughs> Um, and I, um, I want to thank those of you in the graduate program for being here today. Helen has a, um, a program for students who study with her, and um, it's just a pleasure to welcome you here today. So thank you for being here. I also want to thank all of the CCL members who are here in service this Sunday and at the retreat um, because these events that we're um, putting on, and today is an event Right? We do this every Sunday, and there's a lot of logistics and coordination that goes in behind the scenes to make all of this possible. And the people that are in service with the ministers um, are just vital, really. So I just want to acknowledge those of you who are here today in service. Jody, of course, the beautiful altar. Um, <laughs> and Jane and Bob created the sacred space all around the room today and harmony ushering and just being harmony <laughs> um, we love her Marlene over here pastoral support Marlene is coordinating with our zoom community all right so very vi vital function over there and our entire media team and those of you who are, were on the retreat on Friday know what a big job this is all right getting the sound and the coordination going so it's John Fulmer and Marty Levin over here and Paul and Wayne is on Zoom and the team together just pulling everything together so that we can have um, welcome our, our Zoom members as well. And we're grateful to be able to do that. Keith, oh my God, I'm looking right at him. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Keith. <laughs> There's always somebody I'm forgetting. Um, Before I move on to the, a few announcements, I do want to recognize someone else, um, Antana, Antanas over here and his mother, Loretta. Um, if you just raise your hand. Um, Antanas is a newer member of our community and his mom, I think is maybe here for the first time, but they did such a beautiful repast yesterday and they worked all week to um, provide some very, um, very nourishing food and um, we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to offer some programs in the future where Antanas can really um, help all of us learn how to eat nutritiously and still be able to carry on our lives. Right. Um, so thank you for being here this morning. 
All right, very quickly. Um, and Arlen, I can't even see you. You're hiding there. Thank you. See, we need the community. I can't even see her right now. Thank you, Arlen. Yeah, so uh, just to remind, the, um, there is a little fellowship hour for about 45 minutes after our service. And so without Arlen's contribution, we wouldn't have refreshments. <laughs> okay. Um, very quickly, there are a few events coming up. Um, every first Monday of the month, we have Mini Monday, and it's an hour and a half of um, just members in the community who are sharing what's important in their life with our community. And uh, tomorrow night, Elizabeth Nauer, and many of you know her as a practitioner here, and she used to um, play music here as well. She's a wonderful musician. But she will be sharing um, an introduction to nonviolent communication. That's a, it's really a spiritual practice in a way of communicating on a regular basis in a way that honors, respects, and opens us up to listening to other people so that we communicate in a peaceful, um, a peaceful way with others and um, really try to bypass any emotions that are coming up that might interfere with our communication. So I invite you to join that. It's on Zoom and it's also in person. If you'd like to attend the event, uh, you can call or email the CCL office and Marlene will direct you to where it is in person, but it's also on Zoom and the link is in your newsletter, okay? So uh, that's that. And just a reminder, we have um, another event coming up on, let's see what the date is here, Friday night, July 19th, and also Sunday, July 20th, no, 21st, sorry. <laughs> and um, Reverend Roby Chavance is coming here, and um, she is a real dynamic uh, minister. She's also a medium. And um, she's a teacher and a counselor. And she is coming here on Friday night to do her Messages of Love workshop, which is kind of a, you know, messages from the beyond. So it'll be very interesting. And we'll tell you more about that in this week's newsletter. And uh, then she's also um, a very powerful manifestor. She knows how to manifest miracles. So she's giving a workshop that Sunday afternoon, uh, Miracles of Manifestation. All right, so check your newsletters for that. And Reverend Roby will be here that Sunday, the 20th. So do come here. And she also gives private healing sessions. And um, if you check your newsletter, I believe the phone number is in there to register. But if it's not, you could call the CCL office um, and we'll give you her private phone number. And um, she's taking uh, on Saturday and on Monday, she's doing private healing sessions. So I'm definitely going to be signing up for that. Two other events quickly, um, July 28th, uh, Kathy Milano is bringing three shamans from Peru here. They are here um, for a week, really. She's running a, um, a workshop, a weekend workshop, and uh, there's a three-day workshop and a five-day workshop, but part of the three-day workshop will be, it's the last weekend in July, will be the shamans coming here in person and doing ceremony with us. Uh, so that's something we really don't want to miss um, because we love that um, indigenous spirituality. I know our community loves that. So the dates of that are um, Seeding the Light is July 28th. That's the weekend workshop from the Friday until Sunday. And then they'll be here Sunday. And if you're interested in attending the Seeding the Light workshop, you can check our website, the CCL website, and you can also check Kathy Milano's website kathymilano.com or newthoughtccl.com. So the dates of the Seeding the Light are the 26th to the 28th for the three-day, and the five-day is the 25th to the 29th. And I think that's it. Um, I wanted to talk to you about lunch. We like talking about lunch, right? <laughs> All right. And before I do that, I just wanted to mention um, a little bit about Helen Hamilton's programs because I found her um, very fortunately, and I just study started studying with her before she knew I was there, because she has so much information on her website and on YouTube, and um, so her, her website is helenhamilton.com, and it's very easy to join her graduate program and really get involved with, sorry? helenhamilton.org, sorry. <laughs> But um, her graduate program really is an experience of deepening 
and it's a very personalized program. So I invite you, if you're interested, to just HelenHamilton.com, or you can talk to me. Oh, it's .org. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe you should ask somebody else. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> ask Helen. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, Okay, and if you'd like to know, for those of you here for the first time, if you'd like to know more about CCL, of course, um, I think you're signed up for our newsletter, those in the graduate program, just by being here. Um, so just check our newsletter. Now, I wanted to talk to the graduate program people who are here about lunch, because our, our um, afternoon session starts at 2 o'clock. And for those of you um, who have not been in the retreat, you still have an opportunity to attend our afternoon session. So um, you can see Marlene about that. Um, she's signing up people, and you can just walk in. It's um, at, in Palmyra at 1 Morgan Avenue. Um, but those of you who haven't been here before, um, you can stay here until 12 o'clock, and I invite you to uh, mingle with us a bit, and you'll still have two hours to get over to Pal Palmyra. Um, we have, this is Main Street in Morristown here in front of the community center and there's lots of eateries right here. Um, so Passarello's is a really great one because you can get in and out pretty quickly. It's kind of cafeteria style. And also um, there's a Chinese restaurant down the street, Oriental Pearl, if you go out the front door and walk down the block to the left. Um, to the left, yeah. And um, they have good service. It's timely. So um, those are two places. There are many other places as well, but they might be more crowded. So um, if you have any more questions, just ask any one of us. OK, we're done. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Holly. <laughs> Fourth of July parade. Yes. Um, which is this Thursday, I believe, right? It's the 4th of July. Um, Holly here, who is very patriotically adorned, is very much um, a, a community mover and shaker here at Morristown, and she makes sure that CCL is actively engaged in community activities. So um, she is organizing any CCL members who would like to march, I guess, walk in the parade, right, right down Main Street here to gather. <laughs> yeah, we're committed. Okay, so anyway, um, there's information on the back table. If you'd like to join that group, you can sign up, and you can also talk to Holly about that. All right, thank you. So we're going to...